Hello, hi there. This is Turan Han, and I am going to talk about uh, Total War Attila campaign as the Huns, but I'm going to talk about what what is the best buildings that you can build in that 10 slot. Of course, these are still to be tested, but this is why it's a little bit different um, episode. I'm doing a little bit between uh, parts 24, Five and twenty-six, but basically it's gonna be uh, included in the in the let's play and also as general uh, tip. So here are four main types of hordes uh, or army types that I found for building that uh, I, that already are working and I uh, uh, I'll see them working in, in in the future. So basically, there's a lot of different buildings from different types. And, uh, and, uh, and, and and you're all and, and you start off scratching your head what what should I build and when uh, these are my thoughts of course <clears throat> if I, I'd like to see other uh, your commenters what what did you build what did you find to, to work best but I'm just gonna talk what uh, what worked for me in my campaign so the you start with three hordes in the beginning and I think the most uh, biggest thing that you have to worry about in the beginning is growth and, and how much money you're making. Why money? Because uh, there's at present no real way to avoid, uh, like I was thinking, uh, to avoid a higher upkeep on tier 2 and tier 3 uh, units. Uh, because they go like they, they jump from 130 upkeep to like 300 for tier 2 to like 5 or 600 by tier 3. Uh, so in order to prepare for that, your biggest issues are growth, how fast you can build your all your 10 slots buildings in your in your horde, and uh, how much money you can squeeze out so then you have you, you so you can uh, buy more uh, higher tier troops. Uh, so let's start with it. Uh, the first thing you all start with nomadic settlement. It's usually uh, it starts level two. Uh, this is this guide is all for max level. So um, uh, I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not gonna go into too much uh, into abusing each tier. I'm gonna think as if it's like max tier level. It makes the math easier. Um, so I've broken down by food, integrity, horde growth, tax rate, wealth. Everything uh, uh, red is negative. Everything green is positive. And basically what I wanted to have at the end is to be in the positives. Um, well, you can't avoid this tax rate minus, but to have, of course, positive wealth, of course, but to have positive food and integrity. So by this, by having integrity positive, although you could probably tank this, and people have said that, uh, uh, like uh, Linehard, no, no, not Linehard. There was another YouTuber. Uh, another YouTuber. Um, what was his name? He's an Australian who swears a lot. Uh, legend, yeah. He he found out an exploit which I think will be fixed uh, by CA soon. That if you keep sacking a settlement, uh, in, in in it you'll keep raising your integrity uh, for how for how many for however for however much you can click it. For however much your army can, and that of course I think is a, then it makes you can ignore with that exploit you can ignore uh, integrity and just uh, do whatever you want. But uh, uh, I, I always think what is the most sustainable model, even in like other games which I played like uh, not uh, Dead Alive but the, the the zombie game Left 4 Dead, no not Left 4 Dead the uh, Garden State no. I, uh, a state of decay. Yeah, uh, there I, I always try to make a a, a positively. Of course, the state of decay is impossible uh, to have everything positive. But here in Toronto, in Total War, there's always a way, and I like that that you could build an optimal uh, uh, pro region or a province. And uh, of course, uh, uh, the biggest thing is is specialization. But the main thing that I wanted to look at is that I'm staying, that my horde is staying positive in the food and in the integrity, and making as much uh, wealth as possible. So the first, um, the first horde, uh, just choose one of your hordes. Uh, uh, you will want to go to royal encampment, so then you can uh, uh, recruit. Uh, or recruit uh, the the uni guards. It's not that they're the best unit, but that if you want to have like the the at least one encampment can be in your hordes the most highest for the nomadic settlement. 
And for leadership, I think Royal Yurt, nothing really beats it. Unless you, you need it for priests, you, then you can build an Elder Shaman Yurt. But Royal Yurt, why so good? It gives you 17 integrity. It allows you uh, uh, to basically build a lot of structures that hurt integrity. Uh, and that It's just, uh, I think in almost all armies of your hordes, Royal Yurt uh, is, is well worth the food cost. Well worth it. And it gives you champions, which are very good agents. Uh, and they give you noble Akadziri raiders. So only like for like one army who needs who needs a, who needs a priest, I will get it. Or for priest and spy buildings, that's it. Everything else, I would highly recommend royal yurt over the elders shaman's yurt. There's a treasurer, but since it doesn't give as much integrity, I don't really prize it that well. Uh, maybe others can uh, uh, show how treasures could be used. Then there's okay. There's a military. Um, if you, I, I have usually all my uh, forces in groups of two because anything like in in, in Rome Total War, uh, in Rome Total War and Attila, if you attack with one army, you're most likely gonna lose, especially if you're sieging. So I always roll with two armies; it's safer, and I I make sure that I complete my objectives. So if one army say does archers and the other does lancers, uh, that's uh, then they can tw then uh, then one recruits archers, the other recruit letters and then they can switch each other and this is part of specialization you you don't need two military buildings in one horde it's i think it's a it's a it's a waste of food and it's a waste of uh, horde mechanics just have the second uh whole horde be lancer or third horde be be infantry and then just swap uh, uh, be, between armies the key is to keep them together so that they benefit so, for example, what I do for the first one, since it's Huns, for example, is archers. Uh, uh, then I found that two goat pens is more than enough of upfront, fru up upfront food uh, that you don't really need three agriculture. No, for this one, you do need three agriculture if you want to go for royal encampment number four. Uh, but if uh, for, royal, uh, for royal host three, you only need two agriculture. So... Uh, that third agriculture slot kills your income, but uh, it allows you to have at least one uh, able to recruit the, the Unigard unit and have more wealth and growth. But that is actually, uh, the more I think about it, just for one unit, it's not really that worthwhile. So for most, I would say Royal Host, Royal Host 3 is the most you should be going for uh, uh, in terms of your main settlement. Okay, so you got two, uh, uh, then as soon as possible, you should go for the preserved food wagons in the community. It uh, There's two buildings, only two buildings in the whole uh, nomad uh, horde chain that don't have any negatives, only positives. It's a preserved food wagon and wine distributor. Those two are so key to your, food, to your uh, horde growth and to keeping up your integrity. I'd say they're the most key structures in the whole of your horde uh, building chain. It's uh, preserved food wagons and wine distributors. I have them in all of my builds. Uh, like, I don't see how you can pass up on them, really. Because they have no negatives and on, on, on only positives. And because they're, they're the positive is pretty good. 10 horde growth at max. That that'll uh, the earlier you can uh, have that, the earlier you can uh, um, fill out your ten slots. So, for example, uh, uh, let's go into 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 the into, into the encyclopedia, and uh, if we go to um, where is it? If we go to um, there, I already started a meat, uh, uh, a meat curer. Is that it? Yeah. So uh, this is like the preserved food wagons so uh meat curer it um uh, uh where is it in in, in in the in the tech tree in the tech tree i would highly suggest going civic first almost overwhelmingly and only going uh uh out I, I suggest being tier two civic and then finishing up tier one military tier three civic then tier two I think that's a better pace because it allows you more economy and the buildings to support tier two. The mistake I made is that I went tier two before I even had tier one civic done. 
And that mismatch uh, uh, caused a lot of my basically stagnation. Like I made, I like I lost too too many turns up in north, too many turns not really having good growth or 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 or, or like spending much. And the key is, I think, go civic first tier one, and then even go tier two, and then uh, you can uh, uh, fill out. So basically, to be a tier above in civic, then you are military. Then you shouldn't have problems with uh, with uh, with uh, with tier two with tier two troops. So specifically about the meat curer, it's this: it's scourging raids and then tier four preserved food wagons. So you get the best plus ten grows by tier two. That's why I'm stressing it so much. If you get it you, by tier two, you can max out all ten slots before even they get there and uh, and be well in the position to pay f f for, for for the rest for the rest of the structures um yeah so uh so definitely i would say scourging raids and willful subjugation to get that preserved food wagons to get that for uh, horde growth is crucial and even more important than your military in the beginning because your initial military is pretty good, and actually, it's it's better until you have the uh, mil uh, economy to support tier two. Not even talking about tier three. I'm not even there yet. But uh, going back to uh, uh, so it's very close. It's just tier two. Within uh, three, six, nine turns, you can have the best. Uh, you can have this four, the best uh, horde growth plus ten. There's not, there's no, no other building that gives you so much hard growth. Well, this plus seven, but only if it costs so much. And so early, it's basically even you're sitting, as long as you're in camp, uh, you're gonna grow and and unlock uh, slot your each slot faster and grow and grow your hordes faster. So I can't stress enough how important this one building is for your economic development. Uh, now, what is the best money maker? It's straight up cloth maker. It's uh, it gives you at the end of it 1650, and if the more you have of them, uh, the the more income you have, uh, and uh, 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 the tinker's camp. This is for military. The first two hordes you want, I think, a military structure. You do want it. You do need it. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, and the tinker's camp is basically increasing your. Uh, Ammunition at the end of its 15% ammunition for for uh, uh, for uh, hordes it's 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 crazy good and uh, and for example I would do uh, archers and tinkers camp together in one army so then as soon as I recruit them they already have the ammunition and for like second army I'll have like lancers and outfitters so my lancers start with more armor and weapons and then what I do is switch get the horse archers from uh, from uh, Army one, put them into army two, and get them um, uh, more armor and weapons. That all that all uh, that doesn't hurt. Uh, of course, for lancer it doesn't make uh, sense to get ammunition, but for for example, OR archers or infantry archers, who uh, if you go for infantry encampment, uh, they can still benefit. And the key is just spreading spreading out uh, your uh, and really you only need one tinker's camp and one outfitter's camp. In the whole, in all of your hordes, the rest can. It's better to do to be it on other places. Um, so okay, good. So then, wine distributor. I, I just saw that I needed a little bit more to keep the integrity up uh, up. And and uh, it almost seems like you need wine in, wine distributor. It just uh, gives you pretty good wealth and six integrity, which is nothing to scoff at because there's literally nothing else that gives you integrity. Beyond the, besides the, the royal court, um, okay. So, with so horde two is like the main arm, uh, main military production army, uh, uh, and the only thing changes here is the royal host uh, uh, three, not a royal host four, uh, not two goat pens, but now two glass makers, and you see uh, there's a sizable income uh, difference now. You only need really only one horde. Who makes priests and spies? I find I, I still don't understand how to level up priests. Maybe attacking uh, towns, but uh, since I don't understand how to attack priests, I find them pretty weak. 
but spies, um, the faster you can get spies agents and level them by by attacking level one generals or so on, the the better you off you will be because they able to to disrupt, hinder when they critical strike and and. An, an, an enemy army with Hinder, it goes as high as 85%. They can assassinate and they can, on top of it all, uh, 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 join your army. But you have to now unlock those powers. So I actually like this new system because it's before all the scouts, all the agents start, it was everything uh, high and strong. And that was just uh, really unfair. I think this makes it more, uh, a more RP and more... And, and just in general better. So in order to fit those two buildings, Elders uh, Shaman's Yard, it doesn't give you as much integrity. So that's why I needed a second wine distributor. At the same time, uh, the Nomadic Fairgrounds, it, it's a, it gets pretty good 1,100, uh, almost as high as, as, as a class maker. So actually, the priest and spy building makes more money than, uh, than two class makers, even though there's only one, one class maker here. So this is so that's interesting, but at the same time I wouldn't make too many of this. Now, lastly, uh, not all armies need to be 2020. So what I do is is have a 2020 army uh, basically defending uh, like a defensive force and uh, around some uh, like maybe one or uh, uh, like four units. Uh, another horde, which is only economy, and this is the economy build which I am thinking to do, and it will provide 8,800 while it's growing, and 9,360 when it's all finished. So you start with the settlement because you don't need any. Uh, uh, you have a royal yurt for the most integrity. You do preserve food wagons, so then you can uh, unlock all the other slots. You go then goat pens, then another wine distributor, and uh, 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 to feed it all, uh, and uh, and and then four class makers. With four class makers, that's where you get a lot of money. And if this army is always by some other big army or two, and it just has like maybe uh, two or uh, four uh, 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 like spearmen, which each cost like 138, so about 400 uh, 500 costs. You mostly getting you you you're getting still 8k about back, and that this difference having more of these kind of hordes with less armies will will make your uh, your the, the rest of the armies uh, I think uh, uh, get more of your tier uh, one troops, and then once once all is done here if you've noticed is minus four integrity. But that's okay. Mostly you'll be good in integrity. But once you're all done finishing on the sixth, on the on the last once the last class maker is done, then you can because they're in the same uh, a community uh, 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 a, a building group, you can just convert preserved food wagons into wine distributor, and that's the same you can do for any other uh, 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 a preserved food wagon that I have here, unless for example. Uh, well, for these ones, it'll be kind of tough because if you get rid of that 50, they'll go below food. But uh, but but for this econo economy build, it really works. So then once you're done, you get one distributor. And uh, I believe you can max, uh, have 10, have 10, uh, what's called, uh, hordes. So if you have, uh, let's say, this two, like army, this agent, and then you have all the rest, potentially all economic money makers. Of course, you need more than two armies attacking. So let's say you you have uh, four armies that are attacking, uh, more uh, more um, uh, more uh, 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 more um, well, well uh, there you're, you're attacking armies. Uh, four armies attacking. Fourth are a fifth army uh, 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 is is like an agent building. You can still make five economy money makers. So uh, uh, yeah, so at least one or two economy mo economy money makers like that, I think, will allow you to feel tier two troops. The key is though, those economy don't max out 2020 armies. Like put like two or three or four uh, troops, a very low tier, just so then uh, they're not wiped out completely. 
and always have them by some strong defensive army. That's it. Um, well, actually, you can uh, uh, have like one. Uh, so what I do is have uh, one, at least two, always attacking, and two uh, military armies defending. So then, so so then I, uh, yeah. So then I can have uh, this fifth. So then I can have all five economy just around the two defending. So then I can have four armies of uh, of tier of three or, or of tier two and then uh, tier three units. So I hope this building breakdown helped you understand it. I did it for me as well. I just wanted to see uh, what, to keep food integrity uh, uh, in the green and the positives. So yeah, now I have myself a better understanding and I hope now you have a better understanding and I'm looking forward what do you think are the best optimal uh, uh, army horde builds? Okay, but these are my basically uh, one, two, three, four main types that you can build. Um, yeah, I don't really see a diff uh, any other types that you can build. Uh, that's it, yeah. Uh, well, thanks for listening. This was Turan Han, and this was my Horde uh, building sort of a primer. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, hold a building, pro building tree or building tech or building uh, optimal build primer. Optimal, yeah. All right, gotcha. Uh, take care. Peace out.